Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the Dell PowerEdge R640 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on CPUs. Let's hop in. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R640 server. Do us a favor, find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, this uh, video is going to be specifically focused on CPUs, uh, but if you're interested in the 640 as a whole, uh, this series is going to cover CPUs, memory, hard drives, solid state drives, uh, how to install VMware, uh, how to upgrade your iDRAC from Express to Enterprise, uh, plus a whole bunch more. So uh, definitely stay tuned. I think this will be something that uh, you guys will enjoy as a whole. Um, so we're going to just hop on in. Uh, so there are uh, two CPUs inside. It's an LGA 3647 socket, which means it takes Intel Xeon first gen and second gen scalable procs. And I will note for the second gen, make sure that you have an updated uh, BIOS in order to use them. So uh, this means it's going to take uh, silver 4100, 4200 series, gold 5100, 5200 series, gold 6100, 6200 series, platinum 8100, 8200 series. Uh, so there's a ton of CPUs that this uh, uh, system covers as a whole. So many actually that on our um, configurator on our website, if you go to a custom build one, uh, we, we just didn't even list them all because it's, just, it's too much to go through. Uh, it's not easy on the eyes, I'll tell you that much. So if there's something that you want that we don't list, uh, just always you can message our sales team and we can add it for you. Um, but there's a, there's a ton of them. So uh, we'll, we'll hop into uh, one of the questions we get asked all the time is, hey, uh, what CPUs do you recommend? Um, and really that depends on your application. So we have uh, three sets that we kind of uh, classify everything as uh, low end CPUs that are going to be uh, you know cheaper, not break the bank, value CPUs, which also aren't going to break the bank, but they're going to cost a little bit more, uh, but you're going to get a, a better performance and better spec overall. And then the high end CPUs that are definitely going to cost more as a whole, uh, especially for this series that there's still uh, CPUs in it uh, for the series that are $2,000 a proc, um, thousand dollars a proc. That's not uncommon. Um, so that's um, something that we'll cover as well as the high end CPUs. So let's start with the low end. So on the low end, there's three CPUs that I like to use. Uh, all of them are Intel Silver, uh, which are relatively inexpensive. That's the 4110, the 4114, and the 4116. Uh, that's going to be 2.1, 2.2, and 2.1 gigahertz. Uh, the 4110 is eight core uh, versus the uh, 4114, uh, 4114 is 10 core, and the 4116 is 12 core. Uh, personally, I actually really love the uh, 4110s, uh, not necessarily for the uh, the 640, but they're great for storage boxes uh, like uh, the Big Brothers for this, like the 740XD. Uh, if you're loading up a bunch of um, uh, large form factor drives uh, and you don't really need the latest and greatest, uh, 4110 is a great, just cheap proc. We build with them constantly. Honestly, they're great for the 642 for low-end applications, uh, which is you know why they're on this video for uh, the, on the low-end section. And for the value CPUs, um, there's three golds that we like that aren't going to break the bank. They're going to be more expensive, but yes, you're going to get better performance than the low-end uh, CPUs. And that is the uh, Intel Gold 6126, 6132, and 6142. Uh, all three of these are 2.6 gigahertz, so uh, it's kind of a nice average speed overall. It's not going to be the fastest, but it's not low either, so you still get good performance. And then they're going to be uh, 12 core, 14 core, 16 core. So depending on how many cores you want, uh, and all the speeds are the same, so really just what cores do you want? So um, those are uh, great value procs that, again, aren't overly expensive, um, like the next ones we're about to tell you, which are the, uh, the, the high end CPUs. And actually, the first one on the high-end CPU isn't that crazy expensive, uh, but it's definitely more expensive as a whole. The last two are going to be uh, pretty pretty expensive. Um, so we have uh, the Intel Gold that we're going to start with and then two Platinums. So the first Gold is going to be the 6152 and then it's going to be the uh, Intel Platinum 8160 and the 8168. Now the Intel Gold, um, I you know, like I said, it's not going to be as crazy expensive, but it's still going to be you know expensive as a whole. And that's going to be uh, 2.1 gigahertz at 22 cores, uh, whereas the Platinums are going to be uh, 2.1 and 2.7 um, at 24 cores on both of those. So again, it, there's a lot of choices uh, when it comes to the, the 640 and the, the first and second gen Intel scalable procs. Um, so really, whatever flavor you want, you can pretty much find. Um, you can get all the way up to 28 cores per uh, CPU for some other high-end options. Um, so, And we didn't even really get into the, the second gen. We kind of were really more focused on the first gen uh, scalable just because those are going to be better price points out there for people as a whole. But when we 
start getting into the second gen, uh, there's some really expensive ones out there that, like I said, are you know $2,000 a proc. Um, and you know, again, it depends on what you're looking for and what your application is. Um, and if there's something that we don't have on our site that you want, definitely just message us and we can you know customize it for whatever you need. So, all right, the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, take out um, a 4114 silver that's in here right now, and we're going to put in a, a 6140M, um, and we're going to do step-by-step -step, uh, instructions and show you exactly how to do that. It is a little bit different with the uh, 14th gen servers compared to some of the past gens uh, with a clip that we're going to show you. Uh, but before we hop in, I'm going to put my ESD gloves on just to be extra safe. We'll be right back. All right, I have my EST gloves and we're safe to get inside our R640 server. Uh, I wanted to lay out everything that you're gonna need for this upgrade. So first things first, we have a tray with two empty slots for our current silvers that are in there to, uh, to safely put them here. And then we have our golds that we're gonna be upgrading to. Uh, we have thermal grease to put on, so the golds when we put them in there. And then we have a clean rag to clean off our old silvers uh, before we take them out so thermal paste doesn't just get all over, flake everywhere. Um, and then also, in order to uh, remove the heat sink, uh, you are going to need a uh, Torx T30 uh, screwdriver or bit for your um, electric screwdriver. Um, fortunately, we don't have a manual, which I actually prefer, uh, so we're going to be using this one right here. Uh, and I did want to note that it is a different face, so it is not your everyday Phillips head. Uh, so if you're going to work on this in a data center, for instance, uh, just make sure you have the, uh, the right equipment to get inside. So, all right, let's go ahead and uh, put all this to the side, and we'll go ahead and hop on in. Uh, so first things first, just make sure the latch is set to unlock. Uh, pop it open pretty much like every other server you ever in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove uh, the um, the air baffle here just to give a little bit better view for the video, but you don't actually have to do this at home. There's plenty of space uh, and you don't need to remove this, uh, but like I said, I'm just going to do it uh, for a little bit better view for the video. So, all right, we're gonna knock out CPU one right here. This is CPU one, this is CPU two. It is labeled uh, on the motherboard down here. Um, and with CPU one, we'll go ahead and uh, just start unscrewing, right? Get it in there all the way. And because I'm not a huge fan of the electric ones, I'm gonna do it kind of slowly so I can still feel it coming up. There it goes, so it's fully off now. Okay, so we're fully off. I'm just gonna to toss this to the side. The next thing that you're gonna do is there's these two blue clips right here. You're gonna push them in in order to release the uh, the heat sink and then you're gonna lift it straight up. The other thing I wanna note when you're lifting this heat sink up, um, luckily the 640s aren't that that old. Um, so the, um, the, the thermal grease hopefully isn't just completely to a point where it's flaking all over the place. Um, when you get in some of the older systems like a 620, sometimes the paste has been there for so long when you're lifting up, it's just crumbling all into the machine um, and you just want to be careful with that. So I like to, when I lift it up, just kind of flip it over real quick uh, just to be safe. Um, and the other thing is you definitely, before you reinstall the heat sink, uh, we need to make sure we clean the, uh, the bottom of the heat sink off just to get rid of all the old thermal paste. So anyhow, we're going back to the blue clips. We're going to push them in and then we're going to lift this straight up. Like I said, I'm going to flip it over and you're gonna see here that the CPU is installed in this clip. Uh, luckily, there's no thermal paste or anything coming off the side, so we don't really have to worry about um, it being too messy. It looks like whoever installed this originally did a, a good job of keeping it clean because there's, uh, I don't I don't see a mess. So thank you, whoever did that at Dell. Um, if there was, sometimes I will get out uh, a can of um, uh, air blow and just spray it out um, and just make sure that there's no uh, just thermal paste in here because you just don't want it to get into these other sockets, get into the capacitors and resistors. You just want to be careful with it. So, all right, so as we know, um, this is one of the big differences uh, with the 14th gen versus the 13th gen is this clip right here, okay? Um, this clip is holding the CPU down. Um, part of the reason is there's so many pins here, uh, it makes it a lot easier to install it so that you actually get all of them on properly. So in order to remove it, uh, you're gonna need to actually come over here and you're gonna see these uh, little clips right here, these little black clips, and you basically are just gonna open them up and push them in and as you do it the CPU is going to release so um, I'm going to do it like this because I don't want the, C the CPU just to fall off so I'm just going to slowly work my way around and do it little by little and time is uh, our friend on this one we're not trying to rush um, this is the point where I could see someone uh, easily damaging their their processor because they're just moving too fast and the clip falls out and then the next thing you know 
Okay, so there's all the thermal paste. So definitely it didn't come all over. It looks very well evenly spread. Um, so this will be easy to clean up. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set all this down. I'm gonna start by cleaning the heat sink. Now, I don't like to clean it over the machine just because you don't want stuff to flake off. So I'm gonna do it off screen real quick. And now our heat sink is all good and ready to be reused. So we'll set this to the side. Now I am going to go ahead and remove this first before I clean it. It's just too, too much going on in here. So you'll notice these two black clips right here. So we're just going to want to move this to the side and kind of work the CPU up. So just kind of let it release right there and then we're going to pull our CPU out. You'll see the thermal paste all over the place. So we're going to go ahead and set this down in our tray here and get it out of the way and we can clean that later. So all right, so now we are going to want to install our new CPU. This is going to be a uh, 6140M Gold, okay? So there's a couple things that we're going to want to do here. Um, so we're going to need to put it into this uh, to this clip here, the, uh, the latch first, all right? So first things first, um, you'll notice there's this uh, on the corner here, a gold arrow. And there's another gold arrow right here, which will be important. It's actually white down here, but there's another arrow that'll be important because this is where it's all lining up, okay? So, so when you come in here, uh, you want this, um, yellow side facing up here and then you'll notice right here is when we're talking about the arrows there's an arrow that's kind of cut out in the plastic that's letting you know line this arrow up over here so essentially we're just going to come in right here we're going to slide our processor under this clip right here so we're under that and now we are going to uh, maneuver it under this clip right here. So now it's fully clipped in. We have the arrows lined up. I'm going to go ahead and, and flip it over. I'm going to be safe when I do it, but now I can see it's fully it's fully in there and it is attached to uh, to the latch or to the clip here. Okay. All right. So now that we know everything's good with the other uh, clip and the CPU, uh, the next thing we need to do is actually put the thermal paste on and then we will um, line everything up with the heat sink itself. So I'm going to set this down right now safely over here. I'm going to get my uh, messy thermal paste out. So we're going to open it up. We use just the big, um, the big ones because we use so much of the stuff. So um, the way that we're going to do this. Um, you don't want to use too much. Um, as you saw, whoever had done it before had done a good job of spreading it out. Um, so it's kind of what we're shooting for here is the same thing where it's not just a complete mess all over the, the latch and, 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 and potential to end up in the, uh, the pins down here. That's what we want to avoid, right? So we're going to um, just do a nice little one right in the middle. And then I do kind of a cross almost with a little on the top, just little dots all around it basically, okay? Not too much, uh, not too little generally just a good balance and I got a little little left on so I'm just kind of wiping it off onto it. So uh, when we install the heat sink now it's going to smush it and it's going to spread this all around. Uh, some people like to use a little plastic picks and almost kind of paint them on and that's fine too. We just do the uh, the smush mess method where it'll evenly spread it because there's there's no space. <laughs> um, Alright so now we're going to go ahead and install this onto the heat sink, okay? So we go back to the other uh, arrows that we were talking about. So if you look right here where my pinky is pointing, there is a arrow carved out in the heat sink. Uh, back to the, uh, the latch, there's the arrow uh, that was carved out in the latch. And so guess what? We are lining those bad boys up again. So we are going to uh, basically just put all the clips in and do them one by one. And we're just gonna clip these in and after we finish clipping everything in, um, I like to flip it over carefully, of course, and just make sure the CPU is fully on there and you can see everything is connected properly. Uh, the CPU um, is installed properly. The thermal grease is on. Uh, we didn't put too much because it's not spilling over the edges here. Um, so we did the right amount. Um, so everything right now is looking good. So the next thing is we wanna just install the CPU uh, back on to the socket itself so that now we have the connection between the CPU and the motherboard, right? Um, so first things first, guess what we're going to be looking at? Hey, the arrow over here. This arrow has been so important this whole video if we haven't uh, uh, emphasized that enough. So right here, the arrow and the arrow line up. Uh, so we are literally just going to come and slowly put this over 
and line everything up and the clips will kind of uh, pop into place if you need to push them you can um, and everything will line up so now we are perfectly lined up the clips are over the heat sink um, and we're going to bring out our t uh, 30 bit again get it lined up and we are just going to screw this down so uh, overall it's really not a tough installation it is tougher than uh, some of the past generations because of the clip um, but i'm a big fan of the clip because uh, when you're working with this many pins, um, it, you know, we're almost at double the pins. Not quite. What do we go from uh, 2011 to 36, 47? So it's a lot of extra pins. Um, it definitely is helpful just to make sure you line everything up properly because that's to do that manually would be, you know, a little bit tougher and you definitely don't want to damage those pins. Uh, that's the key here is just making sure the pins are protected. So um, that was it. That was just how we do it. It wasn't too bad. Um, and if you're looking for uh, any CPU upgrades yourself or you're looking to custom build a server, we would sure love to help you out. Please email sales at cloudengines.com. That's sales at cloudengines.com. We custom build Dell, Supermicro, HPE, IBM, Cisco. Uh, if you need new, if you need used, if you need Intel scalable, uh, E5s, E3s, AMD Epic, AMD Ryzen, we try to cover the entire life cycle. So please give us an opportunity to win your data center or your home lab's business. Thanks for stopping by. Take care.